A quarter of a century later, we are haunted by that ghastly event, tortured by persisting memories and sorrow. And we are haunted by questions, not only by questions about a possible conspiracy, but by the most painful questions of all, what might have been. Charles Corral looks tonight at fate, circumstance, and death as we continue our series on the 25th anniversary of John Kennedy's murder. Something is wrong here. Something is terribly wrong. Three shots were fired at President, President Kennedy. Kennedy has been assassinated. Oswald has been shot. Yes, sir. All these years after that day in Dallas, some people who were there still think to themselves, if only. What if? What if John Kennedy hadn't gone to Texas at all? His secretary, Evelyn Lincoln, had a bad feeling something might happen in Dallas. She told the president not to go. And he said to me, uh, Mrs. Lincoln, uh, if they want to get me, they can get me in church. What if? A few weeks before the assassination, Lee Harvey Oswald sat down at the home of Ruth Payne, where his wife Marina was living, and watched this movie on television. About 200 yards. It's called Suddenly. It's about a hitman trying to kill an American president. Ruth Payne remembers during that period, Lee Oswald was becoming more and more detached from reality. He was very isolated and very uh, lost in his own fantasies, his own ideas, his own world. Only Marina Oswald knew her husband had already fired a shot at someone, a man prominent in right-wing politics. What if Ruth Payne had known that and warned police? What if? Wonder what could have been different, what would have been different if she had shared with me uh, that he had in fact attempted to kill someone. I would certainly have done something. When we had started out that morning, it was raining and drizzling and cold, not very nice. Elizabeth Forsling Harris was a Democratic Party organizer for the Kennedy visit. And when the skies cleared later that morning in Dallas, she urged the Secret Service to take the famous bubble top off the presidential car so the crowds could see Kennedy. It was years before I found out that uh, uh, the bubble top would not deflect a bullet, much less stop one. But I used to wake up in the middle of the night still thinking, if only I had done something else, or if I had not done what I did do. For a moment, even the car, everything was just frozen in time. It looked like a still picture. Gene Hill thinks, too, about the cruelties of chance and coincidence. As John Kennedy's motorcade drove through the sunshine of Dealey Plaza that day, Gene Hill and a friend happened to be standing right beside the car when the fatal shot struck. Gene Hill is in the red coat. The blur of that red coat might very well have been the last thing John F. Kennedy ever saw. His head was just blown away in front of my eyes. I'd never seen anyone killed before. I haven't since. But I knew immediately that the president was dead. There was the terrible ride to Parkland Hospital. And for those in the presidential motorcade, the what ifs, the guilt, were just beginning. We ran side by side, Jackie holding on to the, the uh, stretcher on one side, I'm running on the other. The president's friend, Dave Powers, now director of the Kennedy Library in Boston, remembers talking to a grief-stricken Bill Greer, the Secret Service agent who drove Kennedy's car. What if? What if they'd sped out of Dealey Plaza after the first shots, but before the fatal one? I thought of it always, and so did he. You know, about Bill, uh, all those agents were very close to us, and that, that they felt so bad. If the driver of the president's car had stepped on the gas after the first two shots... Yes. What... That president would be alive today, and he'd be 71 years old. And he'd be the director here, and, <laughs> and I'd be the assistant. They are countless, the what-ifs from those awful days in Dallas. I could see Ruby out of the corner of my eyes out when he
he stepped out of this mass of people. Dallas policeman Jim Lavelle was the man in the Stetson and the light suit that Sunday morning. He was handcuffed to Lee Harvey Oswald when Jack Ruby jumped from the crowd and shot Oswald. What if, what if Jim Lavelle had seen Ruby one second sooner and pulled Oswald out of the way? What if Oswald had lived? Certainly, if we had not been shot, we could have proven that uh, without it beyond a doubt and satisfied a lot of people's minds that there was no great conspiracy behind it. Which brings us back to the house on 5th Street, Ruth Payne's house. Lee Oswald visited that house 25 years ago tonight to get something he'd hidden there, something Ruth Payne would see on television the next day. It was the same rifle uh, that must have been hidden in my garage. I was filled with anger. What if, what if Ruth Payne had known about the rifle in her garage, the rifle that killed John F. Kennedy? It's really, it uh, just drives you crazy thinking about what could have been different. I, I really haven't tried to dwell on that. Because uh, the grief is enough without thinking that there's something you could have done. Tomorrow night, Americans remember where they were 25 years ago when our president was killed. For now, that's the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather, see you tomorrow. Good night.